Yo, what's good, my relatives? Nochtina me cayó team. Mike Bravo here, Six on Riders, Kimichi Pili. Just here doing this follow up video. Um, I initially made a video the day after Trump was uh, declared the next president elect. And um, a lot of folks were asking me, not a lot, but quite a few people had DM me, friends and people, acquaintances. Asking me because they felt betrayed by a lot of people close to them who they found out were Trump supporters and how to deal with that, right? Um, how to deal with that, but also along the lines of them, you know, being community organizers or cultural workers and still wanting to build and, you know, build bridges and what have you. And um, so... Um, I'm going to touch on that today, but before we go further, go ahead. Don't forget to like and subscribe. So again, we're addressing uh, the Trump's win, the now president-elect to be inaugurated in January, as well as the uh, reversal of, uh, at least you know, speaking from Los Angeles, California, um, the reversal of a lot of uh, social justice restorative justice oriented initiatives right in the form of let's say the um the loss of george gascon as well as prop thir uh the prop 36 passing as well uh i forgot i haven't checked up on prop 33 but that was also another one i was another key initiative that i was promoting and um i'll say too you know, i felt disappointed in the election obviously you know i wouldn't even if Kamala would have won, I would still have been, you know, uh, offering critiques, you know, but, you know, each person had each uh, present elect and, you know, merits their own uh, strategy and their own critiques. Right. And of course, Trump definitely being the worst of the two, but I wasn't also trying to buy into that whole little lesser of two evils thing. Right. So, but even though I've been disappointed, I think a lot of people are in shock for many reasons mostly people who are new to social justice or people who haven't really had their mind or never, you know, who've been in a more, um, I guess, a privileged state of understanding, right, versus people like us who um, are constantly, you know, concerned about social justice issues and um, constantly trying to have to defend ourselves from encroachment and disrespect from, uh, you know, colonial paradigms and, mechanisms but i think i've been pretty i would say not like uh conditioned per se but i definitely had chance to build up um not build up immunity but I've, I've been dealing with this type of disappointment for a while um and just for those who don't know me you know i'm i'm live in venice california i'm fifth generation in venice out here my family's been here for about 100 years and i'm you know long time indigenous activist of like 25 years or so. And um, as well as, you know, I've been on different neighborhood councils and just, you know, try to be active in my community, always with an indigenous centric uh, purpose. And um, a lot of the community here originally has been pretty diverse, you know, predominantly white folks, Mexicans and black with Asians as well, but, you know, predominantly uh, white, black and Mexican. And, uh, even though now Venice, as the last thirty years, it's very homogenized and gentrified. So um, I've been dealing with, you know, being active. I'm always trying to, you know, build bridges and try to like um, just get stuff done, right? Especially given the fact there's there's not a lot of active Chicanos out here, very few active Chicanos and Blacks out here, um, or you know, people of color as well, and even fewer that actually have, you know. A, a respectable understanding of, you know, white supremacy dynamics, capitalist dynamics, and the really root causes of a lot of the oppression of, you know, people of color, BIPOC folks. So it makes the, um, my need to work with people who are of like mind, right? And so um, I guess in, just in, in the mix of trying to get things done and people helping out through a lot of my initiatives, I've had... Um, you know, some recent disappointments, most namely in the recent election of uh, our local councilwoman, Tracy Park. So, again, I'm in Venice, right, which is a neighborhood 
under it's under Los Angeles, but we're in District Eleven of uh, the city of Los Angeles, right? And so, which deals with most of the the bulk of the west side of Los Angeles, right? And so, um, that was a big kind of a wake up call for me. Even though I kind of knew people where they kind of generally generally stood, it was a big wake up call because a lot of people I thought were like you know, uh, um, you know, on the side of you know our social justice issues, and not that we're gonna agree on you know all the details or whatever, but at least agree on the on the direction, right? On the fundamentals. But um when she was she was elected back in uh I wanna say it's been uh almost two years now. And um I was very disappointed in a lot of people. So again the question that people had posed to me was how do they deal with, you know, their friends or loved ones who they feel betrayed by who are Trump supporters? And I would start with be a consistent space for truth and righteousness right just in general however you can understand that one of the main reasons we are in this mess now is i feel anyway from my analysis is but um consistent bombardment and propaganda and lack of critical thinking if you understand the basic laws of marketing i forgot what the concept is called in particular but the basic idea is that people won't buy into your product or whatever you're trying to sell until they've been uh, presented with it for, you know, X amount of time. I think it's like five or six or something like that, right? So you figure all the, the propaganda that's out there, right? You can't go anywhere on, on the media. And even media that poses itself as liberal or leftist, a lot of it's not really leftist. Or We're inundated with misinformation, disinformation, and again, you know, highly lacking in any kind of critique of of class uh capitalism or white supremacy which is all connected whether it's the news or even like even the average again to with even with all the progressive progressives over here in my neighborhood in venice it's still a very kind of a white centric discourse right political discourse even though a lot of folks who are white background don't really see it that way again because it's the norm the default but for people like us who are critical and you know, actually critique uh, class issues. We always know that there's a race dynamic too, and we feel it too because you know we're all times we're the. But if we're still true to ourselves and and you know walking in a in my case a Chicano way, you know um, we're gonna feel it and we're gonna see it. Or you'll go on social media and you'll see like uh, comments like, "Oh, uh, oh, this will happen when you vote Democrat." You know, there's all these are bots too, right? A lot of these are not even real real posters so that's something to be aware of as well but point being you get in there with all these these comments and uh people first of all first of all you're not being critical right and the news doesn't present a lot of the real information that you need it's so logical that people would be misinformed too it's a reminder too we have to do our extra due diligence to try to be on top of these uh information right don't just fall for what you see on social media you know these little fucking white supremacist pages like Streets of Streets of Los Angeles and all those other little goofy ass pages promoting crime and just you know misframing a lot of the reasons for crime. So I guess the point being again, the main key was be a consistent space and presence for truth and righteousness, and with the concept also being that. We need to match up all the lies and the deceptions and the false information being presented out there. However, we can be be a space for that truth and that righteousness and making sure as best as possible, however we can in whatever way possible, that none of this uh, Trump ideology, whether it's Trump, like literally, or just any kind of other racist class ide ideology that Trump wields uh, to make sure that it doesn't go unchallenged. And the second thing is be very clear on what your moral and social principles are as well as be clear on what are the antithesis, the anti-oppositions to your, uh, your principles are. Define your, define your key, the key issues you have with some of the Trump ideologies and some of the issues that you feel are most egregious. And gather your facts, right? And it's, cause it's not hard to do, right? Because most people, like, Trump's a liar. Most of the people are illogical. There's probably, like, there's virtually non-existent any kind of point 
from the people on the Trump, from any Trump supporter that has any kind of real um, decision that they made that's not based in like ignorance or lies or misinformation. Most of it can be easily debunked or challenged with truth. So know what main points you have issue with, and then like again, just gather your facts and gather your your, your counterpoints and your counter solutions. And that's in case of like, you know, the topic comes up just to be prepared, right? And again, remember the truth is on your side. And the reason that I'm really emphasizing for people to really be clear on what their social and moral principles are is because a lot of you out there are like, you have no real critical thought. You, you, you have uh, political schizophrenia. An example I mean by that is, for instance, like people who were trying to vote third party because they were, you know, they didn't want to support genocide, which is righteous, right? But at the same time, um, they were voting against Gascon or for Proposition 36, right? Which are all like pro-incarceration, pro-white supremacy, uh, you know, the things, the, the main principles that we're fighting against behind uh, the Palestinian genocide, right? They're being perpetuated in lower intensity through these policies, but... People went and voted. voted voted against things, voted against things and people that would be more in alignment with being pro-Palestine and anti-genocide, right? Which is to say anti-white supremacy, anti-imperialism, anti-colonialism, etc. Be very clear on what your moral and social principles are. The next thing is understand your relationships with the people in your life who are Trump supporters, or of equivalent, you know, racist, classist ideology. Figure out if they're, you know, assess whether or not how influential they are or not, right? A lot of people I see that are Trump supporters, they're, they're dumb asses. You know, I don't take them seriously, right? But what I do take seriously is the spread of disinformation, how much they're able to influence or, you know, mobilize or, again, influence other people, right? So if it's very low, if... if the probability of them influencing other people or mobilizing people or really convincing people uh, to expand and um, perpet um, perpetuate that ignorance and that racist classes ideology, I would I would say don't really waste your time on that. Also, I would consider the power dynamics between you and this person, right, friend or family, and also consider like their um, their capacity for logical and meaningful conversation right some people just they don't they can't conversate they have no they're not open-minded or they get real angry or whatever so just kind of assess you know so in case you do decide to engage in dialogue or challenge them in some way that you know you kind of you be mindful of how much to push and how again to you also to be mindful of what you're working on too again me, me speaking from an activist point of view um let me give an example so like, there's people here in Venice I know who are Trump supporters, right? But they're, you know, they're friends of the family or I've known them for a long time, you know, and I have love for them as people and whatever, even though, like, you know, I think they're dumb masses with the whole Trump thing. But at the same time, in the context of my neighborhood, you know, being hyper-gentrified and, again, too, like, originally being a very kind of a working-class neighborhood back in the day, they still have, you know, like, and them not being gentrified, they're old school, you know, folks from the Venice neighborhood. And uh, I don't get a lot of support out here. I have a lot of fans of the work or, you know, you get a lot of fans of anti-gentrification or everybody's fans of the idea, but not a lot of support, right? So a lot of times I'm kind of more or less, you know, on the front line by myself for the most part. I do have supporters, but it's, you know, few and far between. But anyways, so a lot of times when I'm trying to work on something or initiative or trying to get something done, I have to, even though these people or, you know, or might be Trump supporters, they'll still be able to help and influence me get a certain thing done here in the neighborhood, right? Because of, you know, the context of them being who they are in the neighborhood and, you know, their, you know, their circle of friends as well, right? So, again, the Trump supporters, but in the context over here, like, I'm not trying to burn that bridge or just smash on them or whatever. Because, again, to a lot of times, you know, we're, you know, they're friends of family or people we grew up with, whatever. So I'm not, I don't, that's just, that's just not me to throw away friendships like that, even though, you know, which brings me to my next point. It's to consider what boundaries you have. Consider what your boundaries are with the various people who are Trump supporters who you might be having issues with or, you know, feel betrayed by, right? So, um, 
just consider what your boundaries are with them. Like, let me give you an example. So there's this person I just deleted on Facebook maybe last week, right? He's a white dude I met, I met at a TP ceremony about eight years ago, right? And we had good times, whatever. And I want, you know, we had some profound experiences with, together in ceremony. And uh, we did a couple, a couple of TP ceremonies with them, right? And then um, it was when at that time I was with my ex uh, fiance and uh, whatever, we broke up in 2017. And I didn't see him for years, whatever, you know, he's doing his own thing over there. And, you know, he was, you know, looking pretty good as far as, you know, the Facebook and, you know, he was doing pretty good health wise, you know, because he had cancer. He was fighting cancer and all that. And uh, he, he looked like he was doing pretty good. And um, again, from that, you know, that native medicine and all that. So um, just recently we started to reconnect on Facebook and I saw he's a Trump supporter. We're like, okay, you know what? You know, he wasn't being like too dumb about it. And, you know, obviously I don't like Trump shit, or whatever, but. Whatever, you know, if I have, again, assessing the capacity of people and that's assessing our relationships. So, like, okay, we're cool, whatever, you know. He's not really chipping, whatever. I'm going to throw my, my disagreements, but kind of, you know, keep it cordial or whatever. And, you know, it, it seemed like it was kind of like more like on a, it was a cordial, fun, uh, dy you know, uh, competitive type of remarks we would make here and there, right? But I never try to push the issue, whatever, you know. Fast forward, you know, we have, you know, the elections or whatever. And then, I'm you know, boom, I'm having an issue with, uh, cause with the Trump uh, winning the election. And, of course, I'm just critiquing and kind of just giving my analysis on things. Of course, being a, a critic of white supremacy, thoroughly understand, you know, thoroughly versed in history, indigenous history, uh, colonial history, etc. Um, and so he basically was, you know, taking my critique of white supremacy as critique and hate for white people, right? Which are two different things. Long story short, you know, okay, if you disagree, no biggie, you know what I mean? But he used language like, oh, then you should go back to Mexico if you don't like it here. And I'm like, whoa, I'm like, dude, like, you know, again, this is a dude I did ceremony with, whatever. And like, we weren't like super tight, you know, but we had some experience and I'm, I'm always one to honor friendships, right? So I just want to give him a chance to try and work on him too, you know? We can't just throw everybody away and cancel everybody. Because that's not always effective either. Long story short, I just deleted him. I don't have... You have to also be mindful of, you know, the energy you have, right? And I'm going to touch on it again later, but, you know, really be mindful of your mental health and, you know, the energy you have, the emotional labor that goes into defending and uh, battling and challenging, you know, the onslaught and, you know, barrage of, of uh, lies and deceptions and propaganda and all that, right? So I just delete him, you know, like, he doesn't live near me. I never really see him anyway. Um, you know, I wish him well, but especially if he come out, if he would have came at me a different way, you know, I would have kept him on there and had more patience. But, you know, he got vulgar and he got, you know, stupid shit, you know. So, boom, delete and like that too. Again, too, assessing, you know, who these people are and what their capacity is. Uh, for dialogue and, you know, the power dynamics and whatever. Don't waste your time and your energy where you don't have to. Another thing, too, um, if, we're really ser if, we're, if we're sincerely upset with the Trump victory, and again, too, it's not just about Trump, it's about, you know, the ideologies he represents, right? Because you can cut the head off the snake, but another head can uh, reappear. Main point being, re we need to research and find out what incentivizes those Trump supporters to vote the way they did if we're serious about countering the ignorance, right? Because we can clown Trump supporters and they deserve to be clowned and whatever too, but at the end of the day, like, we still have to, you know, respect their agency to a degree, right? You know, even though some of them are just pure dumbasses, but, you know, there's some people who actually just might have some flawed logic and false misinformation, right? We have to kind of leave that open for possibility. And then we have to really f try to find out, like, what the reasons, why, what was the reasoning that they voted for Trump? And again, to, you know, some of it, some people's logic is just flawed, misinformation. Again, and we have to just be comfortable with the fact sometimes that some people are just stupid or racist. Again, racist intentionally, not just racist by, by ignorance, you know. And also, too, like, some people might have some righteous fears over things, right, o over things like crime or immigration or whatever again too like a lot of it's just like subtle we can going back to the point i made earlier about gathering our points of information so uh we know what to battle and what to counter and again too 
I haven't found a Trump a point. I haven't found an excuse for voting for Trump that wasn't easily debunkable or that you couldn't easily look up on Google or chat GPT and get a clarification on the actual facts, right? Um, but, you know, some people do fall, you know, victim to fear and at the same time too, or some anxieties. And some people try to say that, oh, yes, yeah, economy anxieties, but no, nah, dude, it's not made for a very, very slight few, but, you know, that's what they said last Trump election and that was mostly not true, right? But again, too, let's say in the case that there are some legit anxieties, whether from correct information or false information, um, you know, we have to kind of contemplate ways that we can show up to help people we know who might have voted that way to relieve their anxieties, right? And again, present them with, you know, counter information and counter solutions to whatever issues or anxieties they might have. Next point is respectfully challenge any and all variants of Trump ideology with the main principle being that no no iteration of, of Trump ideology or racist ideology that's similar, whatever, should go unchallenged. Again, how I mentioned before, you know, find, you know, find your key points, gather your information. Like I guess, again, truth is on your side. It shouldn't be hard to do that. You know, it just takes a little work. Don't, you know, you don't got to do it right now. But like, again, this is a long term battle here. It's not even if Trump goes away next year, we should have to combat all this ignorance and this white supremacy. You know, so yeah, gather information and also consider any rebuttals that they might make to some of the points that you're going to make. You know, and a lot of times, you know, again, so far, my experience has been that everyone I've talked to or debated or whatever, or try to reach out to my friends who are end up being Trump supporters, like they either evaded the questions I was asking them or they were just illogical or just kind of fell back on, oh, yeah, Jesus, uh, Trump is for God. Trump is a man of God. Kamala's a devil or she's for evil or whatever, you know, going resorting to fucking just like ignorant Christian indoctrination crap. N nothing logical. Just pure, illogical Christian doctrine. And here's another great point, you know, when you're trying to debate these people, um, put out their hypocrisies, right? Like, when I was, uh, there's a few people who were using their Christianity as an excuse for voting for Trump, right? And I was, like, pulling out um, what I felt to be, like, you know, standard Christian values or teachings, you know, and... Um, and showing how Trump was totally like diametric, you know, you know, and like they kept, you know, backtracking or whatever, making excuses, right? So again, too, like, if you find out things these people will say they're about, beliefs that they can't, that they claim to be about, whether religious or social or cultural, whatever things that they claim are, you know, part of their identity, what they're about, and then, um, use that to contradict their reasoning for voting for Trump. You know, again, it's one thing for people to believe things are wrong and misinformation, but it's not thing when people like you you're using their own the own values that they profess, you're using it to put the mirror in their face, show their hypocrisy, and that's always a real good tactic. Also too, like down the line too, you know, cuz there's all these uh promises by Trump, but a lot of them are not really feasible. They sound good. Oh yeah, I'm going to deport 30 million legal immigrants, I'm going to, you know, make China pay the tariffs or whatever, you know, but there's like real deal uh, implications for that, right? So you're going to be hearing um, about a lot of the negative economic, social implications of a lot of Trump's attempts to, you know, deliver his promises, right? And so when that happens, you know, you make a good note of it too and you kind of note these people around you and, and uh, let them know, hey, look at your boy Trump did this. What happened about this? I thought you voted for him because he was going to uh, um, give it to China, right? Uh, stick it to China with the tariffs, right? And boom, you know, you could thank Trump, your boy Trump, you know, or find a way to throw it back at them, you know, make them always feel that. Uh, don't let them negate accountability. And again, go, you know, going back to what I said before, assess, assess the people you're dealing with, you know. You want to put, you know what, you want to, Always find a way to keep your presence or connection with them, right? Like push them and let them know what's going on and, you know, kind of put the mirror in their face. But at the same time, don't do it to like, you know, um, with the intention of giving them grief per se, but more of making them see the error in their ways. That should be the bigger goal, right? To get them to, you know, 
really own up to you know their ignorance and do better. But yeah, but whenever you can, shit, you know, r- rub that shit in their face. Also, two next one is don't waste too much emotional labor arguing. And I say that too, because again, you know, going back to what I was saying, some people just aren't worth aren't worth your energy, right? Worry about the people who are probably the most might be the most uh, um, harmful in being able to spread this, you know, virus of racism and ignorance, right? And also, too, especially on social media, I really do believe there's a lot of, well, one, you're dealing with a lot of bots. Second thing is, I do think they're, whether they're bots or actual people, there's people out there who are just, like, paid or to drain your energy and just waste your fucking time, right? Like, again, so I would, again, you know, have the, you know your points ready, whatever, and if you got to kind of, you know, have them, you know, copy and paste it or whatever, and just make sure, like, if you see, like, 10 comments about, like, some bullshit, you know, like, drop in a few of your, you know, copy and paste a few of yours, boom, just just so that they're in there so people can read and there's counterpoints to it, right? And also, too, as, um, I mentioned earlier, too, sometimes you're just going to have to accept the fact that some people are just fucking stupid. Um, also, n- know who you are, you know, like, be, be mindful of who you are and what your energy is and... What your spirit is, because you know a lot of times when we get frustrated or overwhelmed with combating racism, especially people who are real with the fight, you know we can get overwhelmed with uh, the battle. We can lose ourselves in in anger and frustration of you know battling these uh, you know these oppressive energies and spirits. But we have to make sure we don't lose who we are. You gotta really, you gotta find the best balance of understanding the context of where you're at. Again, I gave some examples of how I. My situations here in Venice, given you know the, the racial, economic, and you know, uh, you know, uh, social dynamics here. But of course, where you're at might be different. But you you have to just get kind of get creative and um, find the best way to you know challenge where you can. And again, always try to find some way to hold space for for truth and justice and, and righteous concepts and principles. And just be creative with how you do it. You know, find the best way to. Be yourself, not lose who you are, not lose your character. Um, and again, too, like, you know, example with me again, too, you know, I'm I'm real polite. It's hard for me to be mean to anybody unless they're really mean to me, you know. Like, I can, you know, not be around people or I can kind of, like, you know, uh, be a little antisocial towards people who I'm not really feeling or whatever. But um, it's really hard for me to be rude if someone, even if I don't like them or their politics, right? They have to do something kind of rude, Extremely rude for me to do something, you know, in like kind. Um, but again, that's me. You know, what I mean, if you have a different personality and you're afforded more options, by all means, you know, like, you know, do you, be you, don't lose yourself. Also, um, next one is be vigilant and concerned, but make sure you don't fall victim to excessive suggestions of fear, right? So obviously, you know, like some people have, you know, righteous fears, right? You know, women with a lot of the uh, reproductive rights issues. Uh, Spanish-speaking people with a lot of, like, the, the anti-Mexican, you know, anti-immigrant, um, you know, um, hate and policies that they're, you know, uh, promoting, right? So there's righteous fears and cons- very real concerns that we need to have, right? But at the same time, um, we have to be mindful that the media will all, the media banks off fear, right? They're, they're, uh, they're ministers of fear and confusion, all of them. Right, so we have to be very mindful that we're not being manipulated. Right, look for the facts because stuff's gonna come down the pipeline. Right, it's gonna there's gonna be some challenges and very significant, serious concerns. Right, but again, too, and on with a note of be mindful of your energy and uh, your mental health. You really try to discern what's what's fact, and uh, and managing your emotions and not falling prey to the you know. Uh, suggestive fears of uh promoted by uh social media and you know the obviously you know the the larger legacy medias as well you know really do your best to kind of understand the facts and get things you know straight you know if you find yourself kind of being overwhelmed by certain fears when you read things stop and pause and breathe the next item is get involved in an org get involved in an organization again this is under the you know kind of uh principle of you know keeping always keeping space for truth and righteousness right righteous principles righteous ideology and again too since this is a chicano indigenous centric uh channel i I would say 
really do your best to align yourself with like-minded Chicano slash indigenous um, uh, leadership organizations, right? Not, you know, make sure, you know, don't, not these ones with these coconuts or these people who are, you know, these, you know, these uh, Chicano liberals who, you know, have no critique of white supremacy or capitalism, right? Any organization or- that you, you know, work with, if they have no, if there's not a frequent mention or understanding or a very visible presence of critique of white supremacy and capitalism, then they're just bullshitting. They're not, they, you know, they're not going to, in the long run, they're not going to help you and they're just going to perpetuate the problem that we already have, right? So if you're going to work and join an organization, find an organization that has a very working uh, and active uh, critique of uh, white supremacy. And again, too, like, um, on that note, again, using myself as an example here, in Venice, there's not many of those out here, right? There's very, very few people, if even that, that have respectable and active understanding of uh, white supremacy and uh, critique of capitalism, right? And so, but I start to work and do things in my neighborhood. So, um, obviously, I'm still going to work with people, but at the same time, I have to be, I'm being very mindful of the investments I'm, and my energy I'm putting into other organizations and people who don't have that, you know, same understanding or critique because they're not going the same way. So stay away, stay away or don't be very mindful of how much you invest in organizations that don't have a critique or understanding of white supremacy and uh, capitalism. The next thing is honor your feelings because, you know, I, I'm going through a lot of different feelings, you know, betrayal and feeling overwhelmed because I was already overwhelmed with, you know, just all the work I feel we have to do anyway, aside from Trump, you know, even, you know, Kamala, whatever, even as, you know, like normal or whatever, like if you really understand the state of, you know, Chicano and indigenous people uh, in this country, you understand there's always an imperative. You know, there's, if you have your radar on and you really care about your people, you'll see that there's been uh, an assault on us spiritually, culturally, linguistically, economically for a long time. And even more so with our numbers are growing, there's even more of an imperative to, um, confuse us and undermine our unity and our and our social um, advancement and elevation, right? But even now with Trump, it, it becomes more um, concerning because, you know, of the very fascist, advancing fascist nature uh, that is very probable during his, his term. Don't know this feeling, you know, whether it's helplessness, anger, whatever, like find a way to meditate and, you know, transmute those feelings into something creative and something positive you know being creative is definitely really key you know again being creative in ways that you could promote righteous thought righteous concepts righteous solutions right and the next thing is find community to share and express yourself right because even like this even if i had friends like reach out to me and ask me my opinion because they felt conflicted there's probably like hundreds and these are these are these are people who reached out to me, right? And a lot of people all times they don't communicate or they hold on their feelings or whatever and they end up taking out that anger or that frustration or that confusion in, in other ways. Right. I guarantee you that's more commonplace. So try to find, you know, whether it's yourself or just offer like, you know, maybe even create like little circles, you know, like Zoom meetings or even, you know, find a way, hey, let's let's meet up once every couple of weeks and just chop it up and you know the you know how you feeling about things and or even ask people, you know, I mean, if you have the emotional energy and, you know, the capacity to kind of like absorb some, uh, you know, emotional energy from people to help them kind of, you know, you know, lighten up their load a little bit, you know, do that, you know. But try to find groups and create your own space, find space or create your own space. It doesn't take that much because just getting that off your chest and expressing yourself, that's like half the battle right there. Right. You feel comforted. You feel heard. Um, and again, too, a lot of times people, they get um, anger results, anger and crazy actions result from not being heard. If their feelings aren't being acknowledged, then they find a way to, to communicate and be heard, right? So just by, you know, being a space where you can be, you know, you can hear, you can, someone can hear you and you can hear others, that's go out there and that's going to go a long way. And again, so just, you know, to re- reiterate the main principle, be a consistent space and presence for truth and righteousness, that's a lot of what it comes down to, right? And knowing how to promote those things and also defend 
yourself and take care of yourself as a vehicle for that righteousness, right? You know, understand yourself as being a valuable vehicle for uh, spreading that righteousness. To give yourself as like a, a farmer planting seeds and tending to your uh, your garden and your 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 crops, right? But in this case, your your crops are are truth and and justice and you know um, well being, social well being concepts and uh, righteousness. And you have to watch your plants, you know, watch over them or get other people to help you tend to these these crops, right? These values, these positive concepts. So that's about it, you know. Um, I keep trying to make these videos kind of short and I keep trying to do them earlier in the day, you know. It's like 1 a.m. right now. I'm trying to do these in the, in the morning, but for some reason I keep doing them in the night. But whatever, it is what it is. So if you have any questions or any other things that come up, you know, drop me a message. And we'll talk about it. And again, too, don't forget to like and subscribe. I appreciate you guys. Peace. Diawi. And see you on the next video.